Hello and welcome to Newsbreak Chats. I'm Inda Espina Varona, Rappler's Head of Regions. It's been more than a month, 40 days, since armed men staged the March 4 daylight assault on the Pamplona compound of slain Negros Oriental Governor Roel de Gamo. Eight others were killed, aides, barangay officials, poor people who were just there to ask for financial help for the health problems. National leaders from President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. down condemned killings. They vowed to hunt down the perpetrators and bring them to justice. My task force, the Gamma Panga, to prosecute the multiple murders and attempted murders and keep the peace in Negros Oriental. The assassination of a public official is, of course, always a big story. Pero nung una pa lang pumutok yung pagsalakay sa compound ni Governor De Gamo, the reporters and editors of Rappler tried to go beyond the breaking news. Kasama natin si Ryan Macasero, multimedia reporter who has previously covered Region 7. Sa, ito yung Central Visayas, na sakop ang Negros Oriental. Ryan, nung pumutok yung unang bugso ng balita tungkol kay De Gamo, nung unang-unang lumabas yung mga Photos pa lang dati, no? tapos naging video na. Ano agad ang pumasok sa utak mo? Kasi na-cover mo na yung video na yan. Oo. Uh, well, I've heard, uh, covered a couple of other uh, attacks on politicians before. So, uh, I was actually in the middle of another unrelated investigation here. So, when the news first came out, parang I wanted, I, I heard about the attack on Digamo, but I wasn't sure about how many people were actually killed. So, I tuned out for a bit because, you know, in... Um, when news breaks, sometimes the you know there are inconsistent details. How many people were actually killed? How many were hurt? And then when um, later on, I read that there were at least eight people, uh, eight others na nadamay. Parang okay, this is something that looks like it's very different from a, a lot of the other uh, killings of politicians that I've covered before. So. Parang it was very brazen. and I didn't want to look at the CCTV footage right away until I was ready to, uh, you know, see what happened. And then, you know, we saw the, you know, video of the uh, men carrying long firearms going into the compound and um, very nonchalant. They were very, very calm walk and looked like they were highly trained. And then, parang my thought after that was, how could this happen? Uh, he's the most powerful uh, uh He's holding the most, uh, the highest position in the province. How how could this have happened to someone like him? Of course, Visayas, maraming na assassinate na mga mm -hmm. government officials dyan, especially in the last, since 2016, sabi mm -hmm. na lang natin, no? um, merong sa summer, merong sa, merong sa iba pang, ano, merong pang na preso, pinapatay pa rin, no? but nothing like this. Mm -hmm. You know, usually tatambangan, di ba? Ambush, you mm -hmm. know. But this was an assault. Yes. Knowing that there were a lot of people, there were probably what more than fifty people in there because ano sila. And ano yung have you s covered anything remotely close to the kind of brazenness that um, characterized this um, assault? Um, yes, I remember there was one. Uh, there's a Mindanao, a mayor from Misamis in Cebu who was assassinated in the middle of Cebu City that, that uh, was quite brazen, but there were no innocent people who were nanadamay na doon. Um, so this, I think, is a way more, uh, this is the, the worst that, that I've seen um, in the, the past uh, several years that I've been covering the central Visayas. And uh, surprising because I, I would have assumed that as governor in a province, like Negros Oriental, na it's not. Uh, I mean, we have to be honest. It's not. It's known for political instability, for having issues with you know insurgency. So my uh, initial assumption was, why did not he have not enough security? Why did why was his intel? Did he not have intel that there was a serious threat against his life? Uh, you know, the armed men were just let into the compound. So, um, you know, and, and governors usually have access to, you know, the security, uh, security agencies in their province and region. They coordinate with them. You know, they have uh, conversation or they have um, dialogue with the military all the time. How, how could he have not known? Although, yeah, um, mainit naman kasi talaga, no? Pero pag yung unang putok, yung usapan agad yung words na, that, that kind of 
confidence, not just confidence, that kind of arrogance, knowing na walang pakialam, kahit 40 pa yung taong nasa paligid, mm. we know that we can get away with this kind yes, of attitude. Uh, um, nakita na rin natin yan, except na hindi governor ang inaatake, mm. kundi mga peasants, no? mga farmers, mga rights workers sa, sa Negros Oriental. So, ito ba, nung when you started covering na, um, did this in any way um, enrich yung coverage, yung tutok, yung angulo na hinahanap ninyo? Mm -mm. Um, well, when we, uh, when I was assigned to go to uh, cover the funeral in uh, Negros, uh, in Negros Oriental, I wanted to first get a pulse of the sentiment on the ground na hindi lang ito, uh, you know, political, uh, it's, it's more beyond Digamo and Tevez, but what are the implications to the general population? Uh, there, as you've said, um, there have been many, uh, you know, farmers, many church workers, lawyers, doctors, lahat, all kinds of people have been killed uh, in the in the province before. So, um, how would they feel about this? Now, are they disconnected from the governor? They think. Uh, because I think the initial reaction in um, provinces like this is, um, you know, sila lang yun. It's easy no. to, to uh, no, dis, uh, distance yourself from the these people who are getting killed, drug, drug addict yun, um, activista yun. Hindi, uh, basta I keep my head down and I keep quiet, I'll be okay. And I think uh, what what the, the response that we got from the people was like, a different takeaway than I expected. Na if it can happen to the governor, it can happen to any of us. So there... hindi lang ang governor, no? barangay kapitan, yes. di ba? Dalawa ata, ganon. Merong merong kumihingi lang ng tulong. I suppose that struck a chord with a lot of people because um, marami naman tao talaga pupunta sa mayor, pupunta hmm. sa vice mayor, sa gobyerno, hingi ng tulong. Sabi nga, di ba? From from birth to to death, no? Um, takbuhan ng um, saklolo. So, yung sinabi mo na parang people started realizing na this isn't just about them, it's also about us. So, nang ikaw yung nag-cover kasi dun sa, sa wake and sa funeral, ano, um, nakita mo ba ito agad sa kanila? Uh, actually, hindi. Hinanap mo pa talaga? Did you wonder? Um, I wasn't sure at first um, if... Uh, it was more of a patronage thing. Are they just there because of, you know, uh, they, they got some kind of support from the governor. Um, but there were many we, we've talked to who also were victims or who have families, families of victims of violence who were also related, you know, to what happened to the governor. There were also people who were uh, scared of what, uh, the peace and security situation in their province. So... Uh, I think it was a confluence of many factors why there there were so many who showed up and you know I was just more of trying to observe their emotions how uh, um, what were the discussions happening you know in on the street corners on um, you know in the different the, the different towns in the province uh, I didn't feel it right away but after a while parang okay iba to na um, people would. Uh, um, you know, I have friends and other networks there in Negros, and they were telling me that th these were conversations that wouldn't really happen previously, where people would talk about killings, where people would um, wear the shirts na justice for not just the governor, but for the other people who were killed, because uh, you know that can also calling for justice can also get you red tag. So there's a, I think the climate of fear was very was what I was uh what was I. I I was assuming that I would see when I got there. And the climate of fear is still there, but I think people are starting to find their courage now. So it's not necessarily, a, uh, you know, there hasn't been necessarily critical mass built already, but the, the fact that they're having these conversations, I think, is significant. I, I, I remember, I think it was Mayor Degamo, Janice Degamo, Pamplona Mayor, um, who said na um, marami nang nagsasalita na dati parang pag pinatay yung one loved one, parang suko ka na, wala ka na magagawa, tanggapin na lang yan, which is, you know, um, what we've seen. And yet, even during the funeral, merong mga 
ayaw lang magpasalit, magsabi ng pangalan. But they were already talking yeah. about their cases, right? Mm. Yung ano nila doon. Um, ano ang na, anong nakuha mo sa kanila? Um, ito ba, galit lang ba? Nagsalita na ba? O in talking to you, were they showing na, yes, this time we're going to follow up and try to get justice? O lalabas lang ako sa sama ng loob and then go back and to my quiet life again? I think some some is some is both. I think when we got there was there was uh, the collective emotions of the people was uh, hitting a peak because you know it, it just happened two weeks ago. Um, there were other aside from the eight people who were killed, there were seventeen others who were injured. They have family members, so I'm sure there was uh, a collective uh, grief and collective outrage. Um, but there, there were some challenges because uh, in our trying to talk to other families of the victims, parang they were they talked uh, to other media in the beginning, but by the time we got to them, parang napagod na sila. So some of them wanted to go um, be quiet already, but there were others who um, who were inspired. I think um, whether we like the digamos or not, I think Janice, uh, Mayor Janice, became. Uh, a leader, I think, in making, uh, giving direction to what to do with their anger. You know, she's very clear about wanting the Senate investigation, gathering people to tes testify in the Senate uh, inquiry, and um, trying to put this uh, problem, you know, put the problem of, of unsolved, put, um, of taking action on the problem of unsolved killings in Negros Oriental. Ryan, um, pupunta natin mamaya yung mga ibang um, ibang mga pamilya ng mga biktima, no? Pero, of course, alam na naman ng marami na hindi naman ordinary crime story lang ang tega mo, no? It's just too big, too broad, too getting too deep, no? To be an ordinary crime story. Ang dami nga moving parts, eh. May PNP, no? May AFP, ex-rebels, ex-military, ex-PNP, may politicians, national lang ganyan sa baba. May ayuda pang usapan, no? Um, may, may new provincial officials. May community, may national media. Uh, kasi meron tayong mga nalagas din, mga kasamaan sa anak buhay doon. May regional fellows na nagko-cover. Merong stringers. Ang dami yung national reporters na nag-cover. How, paano nyo sa ganitong complex coverage, paano natin na ensure na hindi kayo, you don't trip over each other, no? Um, paano yan na, ano na, may kanya-kanya para bumuo ng mas, mas, mas kumpleto, no? Na istorya para sa, para sa mga nagbabasa at nanonood. Mm -mm. Um, yeah, there, I agree, there are many units involved in the coverage here. Um, but I think for us, we try to um, just communicate. So, Jairo is the main um, justice and police reporter, so he has a lot of the uh, access and uh, sources in here in the National Capital Region. Um, so, when I was there in Negros, we would talk to each other and then I would coordinate with you um, for, you know, there, because there are many layers to it. There are the local personalities that, you know, I'm from Cebu, so I might not be familiar with. And uh, so communicating with you, communicating with Jairo na, okay, I think this is the story I'm going to pursue now, making sure na I tell you so that we're not pursuing the same thing. Um, when there are questions that I'm unsure of, um, make sure that we ask because we have our, our you know Telegram wow. channels. So I think it's important to have uh, open communication as quickly as uh, possible. Um, and knowing what your straight, you know, what, what each um, strengths are na that you know I'm if Jair, if I think you know Jairo can get information quicker I'll message him na can you can you help me contact this official so it's a lot it's teamwork and it's communication and it's you know initiate taking your own initiative okay um sinabi mo kanina na maraming kahit galit marami dun sa pamilya hindi lang pagod takot no hmm. marami sa mga victims Nang Pamplona, hindi pa yung past, itong Pamplona massacre um, victims. Um, at kahit yung ibang media nagsabi na, minsan nga, they were being shooed away na from their homes. And, and you know, a, a couple of them refused to talk to you because you stayed on. You tried to cover pa. 
ano yung fallback? Paano mo, how did you meet these setbacks na ay, wala na gustong kumausap sa amin? Anong gagawin namin ngayon? Yes. Um, so after the funeral, we tried to go to one of the families, uh, the family of the victim in uh, Santa Catalina. Uh, they told us the day before that they were willing to talk and change their mind the next day. So, uh, parang we, it, it's just instinctive. Uh, so, uh, actually, the day before that, um, when we got ter- uh, when we were told to come back to Santa Catalina, we went straight to Pamplona. Um, we didn't know anyone there. Uh, actually, I had I brought friends because you know. Um, actually, uh, Dumaguete, uh, the communities in Negros Oriental and Cebu, uh, Cebu are very interconnected. Mm-hmm. So uh, a lot of them work in Cebu. Um, people in Cebu also have you know family and friends in Negros Oriental. So we had I already had some networks there. So I brought them along with us, and uh, we uh, just went around um, to talk to. Uh, Actually, corner to corner, house to house. So, parang foot, uh, you know, boots on the ground talaga. Na, um, can you help us find this person? We just want to talk to them, and we almost gave up. And when we got there, see, si, um, Lady Jean uh, was the wife of one of the drivers uh, in who was killed in uh, the Pamplona massacre. Uh, when we approached her, she she was willing to talk, but she didn't want to have uh, cameras in her face. And I, even if we were driving around all day and very exhausted from the coverage, we had to respect that because she is the victim here. Um, so we decided to just talk to her, and we her story. You can read her story in our in depth um, in the news break section. But it was very um, an emotional discussion. I was. Um, Concerned if she was able to already see psychosocial uh, services um, to process her trauma. Um, she said she has, so I proceeded to talk to her. And um, it's very tricky to navigate as well because I don't want to trigger and, you know, her, I don't want to trigger something that will prompt her to become too emotional that she can't talk anymore. Um, but, you know, we had a a, a discussion and parang even her she was able to see the bigger picture na it's not just about her but this long running problem she said na she doesn't want just want justice for her husband Jomar but for all of the victims and that you know this isn't the first killing that she's witnessed in her community or heard about in her community but she hopes that it would be the last and I think that to me was um, interesting that you know, even it's not just the governor, but even normal everyday people are able to see the bigger picture in the situation. Na cover natin si Bishop, no Cortez, nung funeral. But you also managed to interview a senior priest. Tell us about paano ka napadpad sa kanya. Ah, okay. Because that was the time also when you were ra- running out of people to interview, na no. Mm-mm. So it was our last day uh, in uh, in Negros Oriental. And the family of one of the um, victims that wa- we wanted to talk to, the, like I said earlier, they changed their mind. So we uh, were figuring out who else we can talk to. Um, baka exhausted na yung mga families ng victims, but we still wanted to get a sense of what is the what is the feeling on the ground here after you know it, it was uh, two or three weeks after the killing, um, and. I think church people, church is a place where a lot of, you know, people gather, they talk, the priests are very involved in community. So we thought that would be a good place to get, you know, um, a sense of how this killing has affected people in other towns in the um, province. So we tried to go to the bishop's palace, like we didn't make a call or anything. We just went there, knocked on the door. They call. Yes. Uh, They told us to go to the social action center, the diocese. Um, the Social Action Center referred us to this priest, um, uh, Julius Horuela, uh, Monsignor Julius Horuela in Dawin Town, which is about 30 minutes away from Dumaguete. The driver that uh, of the van that we rented was a sacristan of this priest, so they, okay. they already knew each other. So it's very pro- small town, you know, um, um, networks, diba. So when we got to Dawin, um, when when we arrived there, the priest was already on his way out as when we saw his car leave um, but since i know the driver is you know he's a familiar face the parish staff told him where 
he was going. So we followed him there. <laughs> and then he was going to a house blessing. And because this priest apparently is also involved in human rights work mm -hmm. and is also um, involved in, um, in working with the com um, PNP um, to educate them about human rights in, uh, uh, in, in human rights in Negros Oriental. So uh, we got there, the driver was the one who talked to him and he agreed to talk to us. So we just set up in the front yard of this family's house. And we were able to, you know, get a good idea of what uh, his parishioners felt about uh, the killing of the Gamo. He was optimistic, but he was also very guarded, I think. Yes. He wasn't too sure if this would really mean a sea change yeah. in the political and social mm -hmm. conditions in, in the province, which, um, of course, alam na natin, no? pero hindi natin tatalakayin muna ngayon yung ins and outs ng investigasyon nila kay... Representative Tevis and his brother, and all the, how many now? 11? 12. Oh, 11, uh, yes, 11, but one was killed. Okay, in, one uh, was killed. And Ryan, um, how did it help that, you know, you had just covered Odette? Hmm. You know, a lot of deaths also in Odette, no? Um, a lot of deaths here. Um, a, lot, a lot of people say now, how do you journalists? Um, keep yourselves composed while you're covering deaths, you know. Mm. And hindi ka naman parachute journalist kasi taga doon ka eh, taga Cebuano ka, di ba? So basically neighbors mo ito lahat, like Odette, you know. How, how, how do reporters um, try to safeguard then, you know, their emotional well-being even while, of course, pursuing the task of, of trying to tell the stories of these bereaved people? Mm -mm. Well, I think having a sense of purpose um, is actually helpful because you have something to set your mind on rather than just you know sitting there waiting for things to happen. Uh, in um, so in our Negros coverage, my I think our sense of purpose was very clear that uh, you know I didn't want it to be a coverage that just focused on the talking heads, that it was just Tevez and Digamo and the police said this and this official said that because you can nowadays you can do that virtually. So my thoughts were my thought was what uh, can I do here that I can't do if I was in Manila? And that I think was what set the tone for my coverage that you know, there are people, especially a lot of towns that did not have signal, you know, that you would not be able to talk to unless you really go to them. Oh, may mga towns doon walang mm -mm. cell signal, di ba? May mga hindi tayo makakontak sa kanila. No? Yes. So, uh -oh. And then there was, of course, Mayor Janice de Camo, who, who at a very traumatic time in her life, um, managed, you, you know, you eventually managed to interview her and, and, and was rather eloquent, no? Um, as a reporter interviewing the widow at a very sensitive, emotional time, ano yung guide mo sa evaluating information? Because usually, ganun tayo eh. Pag pumasok tayo, may tragedy. Um, ang mga tao may sasabihin, but meron kang guidelines on how to, how to evaluate the information received and what to use and what to study more muna. Mm -hmm. So ano yung... Just so, just to, so that our um, our audience, our friends, our partners, you know, will understand what makes journalists tick this way. Mm -mm. Um, with re, uh, with Mayor Janice, I think it was more of or uh, it was more of um, talking to her and seeing where she is at, at that particular moment because that I think that was already four weeks after. Um, in the previous one, uh, for first week and the second week after it happened, I can she her, she was more. Uh, I can tell her emotions were higher, and by that time she was more cooler. Um, so I felt comfortable um, having that uh, conversation with her. Um, so with regards to her emotion, I didn't feel that there was anything that was um, that she said because she was just emotional. I think she's a very um, Per, she's a person who's very clear in why she um, says the things she says and the choices that she makes. Um, and so, when uh, in our interview with her, when she was um, she was naming names of these people that she believes are involved in the killing of her husband, 
a, a for me, I, I felt like that was not necessarily because she was emotional, but because she really truly believes that these people were involved. But um, on our side, of course, we have to you know get more get more cooperation on it. So that's why we decided to keep that you know. And uh, later on, of course, lumabastare na no from officials and and all that. Yes. So yeah. So um, yes. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Ryan. We're we're now down to just a few minutes and. Um, We'll keep on governing. Ano yung babantayan dapat? Ang dami ng peace and treaty to. Ano pa yung dapat babantayan dito sa Digamakil? Mm -hmm. On um, Monday, April 17, the, the, the Senate will have an inquiry into the killing. And I think that will be, uh, I think we can expect a very long, uh, in, a long and colorful inquiry into the killing because we have personalities who are known to... A lot of theatrics yes, coming up. Very yeah. theatrical personalities. Um, we have uh, Senator De La Rosa, of course, uh, Senator Tulfo. We can, I think we can expect him to you know, go very hard on um, the people who are expected to testify. So far, we know, um, according to but uh, Senator De La Rosa, they expect um, Congressman Arnie Tevez to appear uh, through Zoom. Uh -uh. The De Gamo family is expected to be there. So... I'm uh, I'm curious if there will be any new revelations coming up because the Department of Justice has already held several press conferences where they explain. Yeah, yeah and just siguro sa context, ano, um, context about Senator De La Rosa saying that Representative Tevez is going to be appearing by remote. Um, Representative Tevez is at the moment suspended by the House of Representatives precisely because he has not come back when he was told to come back. So we're not exactly sure. And of course, while he has not yet be has not, no complaint has been filed against him yet in the Degamo, in the Pamplona killings, a complaint has been filed against him for previous killings. Mm. So we don't know how it's going to weigh up the Senate allowing him to 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 come in on remote. So aabangan po natin, no? Um, mahaba pa huto. Um, this is just the start of what it's going to be a very long and very winding road in seeking justice for the victims, not just for Governor Roel de Gamo, but for, for the eight others who were killed. And sabi nga ng mga obispo at sabi nga ng mga monsignor at sabi ng maraming tao, sana hindi lang sila. Sana dun pa sa napakamaraming um, pinatay rin sa Negros Oriental. Nasa susunod na namin tatalakayan yan. Patuloy namin aabangan at i-cover ang development sa kasong ito. Sundan po kami sa Rappler, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Uli, ako si Inday Espina Varona. I've been with Ryan Macasero. This has been Newsbreak Chats. Good day.